All right, now I know when I took this apart, I was careful to keep all of the hardware, uh, the screws and everything, but I uh, didn't keep them all sorted and I didn't label them all. But I know I could go back and look at my videos and probably figure out which screws go where. But rather than go through that trouble, I think I'm just going to try and use some Vulcan logic to try and figure out where these screws go. Now this jar right here, I had this disc, which I know is for that, that bearing, multi-part bearing assembly. I had just these three screws in there alone with this. So I feel confident that these three screws retain the top cap for this bearing. So those three screws are the same size as all of these, uh, all of these right here. So I've got uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 of those. I have one of these which is smaller than all of those. And then I have six this length. And then I have two extra long ones. Then in this bag of hardware that I had clearly marked SIP drill press, this is the stuff when I was disassembling the drill press outside to bring it down into the basement. And in here I have more of those size screws. And let's see, it looks like I've got three more of those size. Two of those. Well, I'll make it three of those. All right, so I'd be willing to bet these screws here are for caps that I removed when I was initially taking the whole thing apart. So those are probably going to be these top caps on the, on the top here. Just uh, like the cap that goes here, maybe I don't know. Give me a second to figure this out. Well, I just opened this Cool Whip jar, and this has all of the bearing components for the main bearing on the bottom pulley here. And unfortunately, I forgot this was in there, so this has not been stripped, primed, or painted yet. So that's going to stop me from doing what I want to do today, which is put that in. One of the things, that, it's going to stop me from doing one of the things. So I could keep that out. I think I'll put this guy with the three screws, since that belongs to this, in here. And then also I've got <clears throat> that tiny, tiny, tiny set screw that goes in this. I had this in the pillbox, so that. Keep all that together. So that when I do finally clean this, prime and paint it, I'll be ready to go that. This nut is going to have to be cleaned up, primed and painted. This nut actually goes through, this nut actually goes on the bottom of this. This is the arm that the, uh, this is the arm that the tensioning, uh, this is the, the shaft that the tensioning arm pivots on. So I gotta fix that. Uh, so let's see what else I can do here. All right, first off, with uh, very few exceptions, the majority of the caps that put this thing back together have three screws required to hold them in. With the exception of, uh, I think maybe this might be the only thing that has two. It's also very thick here, so I'm confident these two long screws that are longer than all the others are for this, putting this on. So I'll just keep those screws with this. I'm not going to put this on right now because I'm going to install the shaft and all that mechanism first. And I don't want this hanging down low, low below where I've got this sitting. This will go on near the end. Now when I look at the majority of the caps that I have left, these here on the top, this one, uh, there's two of this style here. They're all virtually the same thickness. And I've got these two big bottom caps that have these uh, assemblies to them. They're a little thicker, okay? <clears throat> and then I have this from the gearbox, this two-piece assembly 
The screws have to go through both of those. Those are the thickest. So I only have three of these screws and these are the longest ones left. So these are gonna be for this. So I'm pretty confident that these three screws um, are in that uh, container there with the uh, Cool Whip container with the bearing assembly that went in here. So I've really got on the top here, I've got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I've got 15 screws in the top here that are probably gonna be all the same length. So if I go with two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, Twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Well, they, there you go. That's interesting. So here's my problem. Uh, I would have fifteen if I add this one little one. So I'm thinking this one screw, even though it looks physically smaller, it's a tiny bit shorter, probably fits just fine in one of these holes. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same size thread, it's just a tiny bit shorter and the head's a little bit different size. So probably, I mean, that could be even at the factory that when they, they picked that screw out of a bin, well, who knows what the deal was, but that screw is physically, it's the same diameter thread, but the head is physically smaller in diameter and it's a tiny bit shorter. But that's my 15. This is gonna be for all my top caps. And then that leaves six of these medium size screws right here. That's gonna be for these two big robust bottom caps that have the, the gear mechanism on them. So now I know all my, where all my screws go. I just whizzed three of these screws real quick on the, uh, on the wire wheel. And uh, now I can tighten down this cap which I hadn't gotten around to doing and I'll come back and I'll spot prime and paint all of these screw heads uh, later just to keep them from flash rusting I gotta screw this cap in because I want to invert this whole thing so that I can work on that bottom assembly All right, so now I've got it on its side here so I can get to the bottom easily. And we've got these two assemblies that I have to go in and these are not identical. This one, you can see it just has the gears in it. And um, this one <clears throat> has this extra little pulley right here and that's actually got a slot right there. So I know this pulley is what the chain runs over that supports a weight that slides up and down the inside of the column and that's actually what puts tension on the quill to bring the quill back to uh, its uh, neutral position when you're uh, you know after you're done drilling it's uh, basically to assist the quill going back up so that's pretty simple the way that works but what I'm thinking is I guess I'll take all this is, is it's very simple it's just a screw and it pivots on the screw but I'll take that screw out and put a little grease on it. But the fact that this is for that assembly tells me that this is gonna have to be the front one, okay? And the fact that this cup is what the uh, barber pole rod, as I'm calling it, pivots in tells me that this is gonna this has to go like so because it's the only way it's the only only way everything's gonna line up the way it should so yeah if I put my finger down in this hole now I can feel that that's sure enough that's where that's gonna go so let me grease 
Let me grease that puppy. Don't need much lube on there. And uh, so I just use my acid brush and spread some grease on there. I'll put this back in. See how it sounds. That's fine. Okay, so now I should be able to put this in. I don't think this is going to hold me up from putting this in. But the question is, what I'm wondering about is I'm wondering about this cup that I noticed that's clearly supposed to be a cup that oil should sit in so that it can run through a little hole here and lubricate this pinion gear. And then I think by design it spills out of the uh, center shaft of that pinion gear down onto this gear. But the uh, question is how does that get filled? So if this is... That is weird because if this is in this position like this which I believe it goes in. That cup is located it's located in a spot where there's no hole. There's no hole in the casting to squirt anything in there. And the idea of having to drop this down to put lubrication in there seems nuts to me because of the fact you've got to pull that shaft to do that. But that must have been what they intended which I could put lube in here now, and if I turn it, it's just going to spill out. So maybe these should be installed after this is on top of the pedestal. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking now. The alternative being, I just take this out and grease it, but to take this out, I've got to take this gear out. And to take this gear out, I've got to push that I'm going to push that shaft out. It's press fit into here, and I'm not doing that. So, that is not going to be an option. That is supposed to be lubricated by that, I think. Right? Well, maybe not. I wonder if I should just grease this. I can clearly see there's a hole in this cup for the... Uh, lube to get onto that. And that's got to be oil that goes in there because grease would not migrate in through the hole and just keep it lubricated. This gear clearly is moving freely. So it's this gear here that's giving me a little bit of a bind. That should have the oil on it. I don't think there is a hole in that thing. No, there is not. So these gears are going to require lubrication some other way. Guess maybe I won't install those now. Oh, bummer. Ah, you know what? It's about lunchtime. Maybe I'll take a ride into the city and talk to the bearing guys.